Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna do five DIY home decor dupes, all inspired by Oliver Tillier. If you're not familiar, they have gained lots of popularity over the last couple of years through influencers like McKenna and Lone Fox. Located in California, they source old world objects from Europe and other countries. Antiques and vintage items that are weathered, worn, a little rough around the edges, but elegant at the same time. Think oversized pots, Turkish terracotta, Moroccan and oil jars, paper mache and dough bowls, reclaimed wood furniture and they are not cheap. Today I'm using items I already had or thrifted and I'm going to show you step by step how I was able to recreate five of my top picks from Oliver Tillier. Let's get into it. The first project is a paper mache bowl. I've always wanted to try doing one of these. I particularly like the footed ones and I am also going to try to recreate that little rim detail near the top like these are. This is a bowl I've had for many years. I've used and enjoyed it a ton. It was actually sitting in my donation pile and I rescued it. I'm so glad I did. It's the perfect size and shape for this. Like I said, I've never done paper mache before and I wanted the best recipe I could find. For that, I turned to Joni over at Ultimate Paper Mache. You can find her here on YouTube. She has come up with her own paper mache clay recipe that she uses for animal sculpting. Not to be confused with traditional paper mache, it requires more ingredients and is a different texture. Okay, let's get started. Here's what you're going to need. A gram scale, some mineral oil or baby oil. This is optional. Elmer's glue oil, also called PVA glue in other countries. Joint compound, flour, toilet paper, a hand mixer and a strainer and a couple of bowls for mixing. I'm going to put the recipe in the description below along with the links to all the products I'm using today so you can just enjoy the video and if you want to try this later you can refer to it if you wish. I started with the scale set to zero with the bowl on it so it doesn't take into consideration the weight of the bowl then I added two or three blocks at a time of the toilet paper until I got to 72 grams. Then I added some hot water and left that for about five minutes. Getting the paper just right is an important step in this recipe. You want to start with 72 grams of dry paper and end with 330 grams of wet paper. Once I had it in the water for about five minutes, I squeezed it out and put it in another bowl, which again, I made sure the scale was set to zero with the bowl on it. You'll see here, I went back and forth squeezing or adding water. You just want to play with it until you get it just right. Then I broke it up into small pieces before adding 195 grams of glue and 440 grams of joint compound. And well, I had to do the old scooping out method to get my measurements right. But I'm sure if you pour it slow enough, you can get it without having to do this. Whoops, whoops. There we go, 195. Then I added 440 grams of the joint compound and mixed that together. She recommends not using the DAP brand of joint compound for this recipe. So if you wanna try this, keep that in mind. I've put links in the description to everything I'm using to make it easier for you. After just a few minutes of mixing it up, I added 70 grams of flour and two tablespoons of baby oil. Now that I have my mixture, it's time to have some fun. Put on some music or a good podcast and just apply it. You can put it on as thin or as thick as you like. You can have as much texture as you like. The more you work with it, the smoother it becomes. And I absolutely loved working with this recipe. It gives you a good amount of working time before it starts to dry so you can manipulate this as much as you like. The more you smooth it out, of course, the smoother it gets, but you can leave as much texture as you like. I did the outside first and left it for a few days to completely dry out, then repeated the mixture for the inside and created that little rim detail I spoke about earlier. This rise to an off-white color and I suppose you can stain it if you prefer a darker look like some of the Oliver Tillier inspos. But I really like the color as is so I left it this way and this is how it turned out. Thank you. 
The next DIY dupe is this vase. This photo is courtesy designer Jake Arnold who used it and styled it in one of his projects. What I particularly liked was the tones and the colors. This is a vase I already had, nothing expensive. I think I picked this up at Ross about a year ago. This is how I got it and I had initially painted it black and I have been using it this way. I thought this would be perfect to just recreate the color combo and add that visual texture. For this, I am using sample paints. You guys know I always pick these up when I go to the store. They are only 50 cents. I grab colors I think I could potentially use and just keep them in my stash. Here I'm mixing up some of this terracotta color with this kind of a dirty brown. Then with a damp shop towel, I just worked it into the black. It helped to keep the inspo in front of me. You can see here I kept it open on my laptop. I went with a layer of that reddish brown mixture that I made and then I added in some more of that black and just kept working with it until it felt right. I love the way this turned out. Take a look. One of the things Olive Atelier is best known for are oversized pots from old world regions. These are the ones I picked out. I liked the imperfect textures and natural tones of these. And here's the story of my imperfect pot. Just over a year ago, I was driving around on bulk pickup day and I saw this guy. It's extremely heavy and it was sure willpower that I was able to get this into my car by myself. He was broken in several places at the top, but these size pots are expensive and I only saw the potential. Several months later, I attempted to repair as much as I can of those broken pieces. Several of them were inside of the pot. I scrubbed it, got it cleaned up and used some E6000. It was missing some of the pieces so I just used the ones I had and repaired it. For this project I will be using another recipe from Joni over at Ultimate Paper Mache. She came up with a formula that can be used on outdoor projects. We're going to be using a few of the ingredients we used on the paper mache bowls but we will be adding Portland cement. Okay, so the drawback with this is I could only find Portland cement in bags over 90 pounds, which isn't ideal if you just want to do a small project. The first thing I did was split it up into five pound bags, which made it easier for me to store it away and easier for me to move it around. This method is pretty much the same, but the measurements are completely different. For this one, you start with 22 grams of dry paper and get it to 110 grams wet. Then you add half cup of drywall compound and half cup of glue. Once you get that mixed up, you then add one cup of Portland cement. I do plan on doing this on many other things I have around that I can upcycle and make them useful again. Because I have so much of this cement, if any of you would like to try this, you can reach out to me and I will send you one of those five pound bags if you're in the US. I can do a flat rate box, you just pay for that and I'll send it to you. A few things to keep in mind if you wanna attempt this particular project is First, you wanna make sure you're wearing a mask when dealing with cement. And of course, wear gloves. It's also very important to rinse your mixer, your bowl, and everything you use to mix this up outside and not down your drain. Then I just smeared it all over the pot. I went lighter in some places, so some of that terracotta peeped through. I made it smoother in some parts. I left it textured in other parts just to give that variation. And I did end up doing a total of three mixtures for this pot with days in between. I used the mixture to build up on that missing spot. I just built it up a little bit. A few days later, I built on it again. And then by the third mixture, I just built it up a little bit more. I didn't want to make it perfect. I wanted to leave just a little bit of that indentation there just to add to the authenticity of the look of the pot. After this cured for about a week, I pulled out some of my sample paint. I mixed up some of the earthy colors and I added some browns, a little bit of greens. Then I added a watered down mixture of an off-white color from my sample paints and worked it in to get that organic aged look. I do plan on putting a protective coat on it once it's had some time to fully cure. And now he has an entire new life to live.
For this next DIY dupe, I wanted to recreate these dark colored vintage pots. This will fit nicely into my home decor. So for this, I'm using a soup terrain I picked up at the thrift store. Unfortunately, it wasn't useful as it was because somewhere in transit, the bottom got a huge crack. I was so disappointed, but I held on to it. And once I decided to do this project, I thought the little handles on these and the shape of it will do really well to replicate this look. To get started, I covered up all the pattern with some spray paint I had on hand. This one had some texture, although I was just wanting to cover up the print on there, but the little texture didn't hurt at all. Once it was completely dried, I pulled out those sample paints again and did a watered down mixture of the black I had used earlier. I made sure to do not just the outside, but the inside as well. Again, I'm keeping the inspo pick in front of me as a guide and I'm adding a small amount of that beige color. Once everything was completely dry, I repeated it again to get it looking a bit darker or deeper. And this is how it turned out. For the final and fifth DIY dupe are these Olive Atelier Moroccan oil jars. This is the one I see the most and I love that every single one, although similar, are so different. For this, I am using a vase I picked up at the thrift store earlier this year. Some of you may remember it from my guest bedroom and office makeover. I wasn't a fan of the finish that's on it, but I loved the height and the handles. First, I'm giving it a light coat of the off-white color, again from my sample paints. And once this was dried, I brought it inside to my now established DIY counter, aka my kitchen counter. I wanted a terracotta color, but the little sample I had was way too red for this. I pulled out this can of garage paint I had in the shed. This, by the way, was also from the Oop section. I paid $9 for the gallon. I picked this up last year when I was getting ready to do my front patio makeover and then decided this color wasn't the direction I wanted to take. I watered down some of this color and used it together with that mix I had made for the black vase earlier. I then applied both while it was wet and just blended them together. Before leaving it to dry, I took some of that watered down patio paint and created some watermarks on the top. After this was completely dry, it was time to put the crowning glory or the finishing touch to give it the Olive Atelier look. And can you guess what I'm using? That's correct, yet another sample paint I had in my stash. Using a spoon, I'm pouring some of that green color right around the rim and letting it do whatever it wants to. I hope you all enjoyed these DIY home decor dupes inspired by Oliver Tillier. Do let me know in the comments which was your favorite and if you haven't already, do consider subscribing and don't forget to like this video.